Hi guys, what is going on? And welcome to my ultimate review for Conqueror's Blade. So we're going to be covering everything from what the game is, what the game is about, what are its good points, what are its bad points, and is it a game that's worth downloading and getting into now in 2021? So what is Conqueror's Blade? Well, I would describe the game as a sort of hybrid cross between Total War and Mountain Blade. You take control of a single hero, making use of a variety of different weapons, from things like pole axes across to things like longbows. But it's not just about hero versus hero combat, you also get to bring a unit of troops with you into battle. Given these troops can be up to like 40 men strong, and there are 15 players on each team, it does make for some pretty epically sized battles. As I'm sure you can see from the video, most of the PvP matches are going to be taking place in the siege maps with one team having to defend and another being responsible for trying to besiege and conquer the castle. Heroes do get multiple respawns and you can bring more than one unit with you. And yes, there is siege equipment. From siege towers to trebuchets, everything you should need to be able to siege a wall is there in the map. Okay, so what is it then that makes the game an MMO? What is it you're trying to achieve? You know, what's the end game? Well, I've been playing the game for over a year and a half now and I'd say that there are kind of two answers to this. Firstly, it's about sort of levelling your character, locking, equipping and upgrading the combat troops that you have available. Because, you know, when you first start playing the game, you're going to be bringing peasants, farmers, rabble into combat. But as you progress and unlock more units, you'll find that the available number of troops increases, you know, all the way up to sort of fully armoured monastic crusader knights. But this is probably a good point to talk about the grind. Is there a big grind in Conqueror's Blade? In short, I would say, yes, there is a pretty decent grind in the game. I think it probably depends what you're used to. If you compare it to a game like, say, World of Tanks, then actually the grind isn't too bad. There are only five tiers of units, not ten, and actually the length to unlock each one isn't too bad. So, yeah, that's not so bad. But compared to some of the games, there is quite a lot of stuff to unlock. But there is quite a lot of help now for new players. There's quite a lot that's going to boost your progress fairly quickly. So you're going to be able to get up and amongst some of the more experienced players pretty early on. So yes, there's a fairly decent grind, but it's not unsurmountable. The second big endgame element is the open world and territory wars. You can start to venture out from the safe zones and explore the worlds of Ostaria and Ungavaria. You are free to be a bandit and attack other players. You can gather resources from farms, mines and quarries for crafting and then you can also take part in something called territory wars and this is where your guild or house can fight with other players and other houses to gain control of land, villages, towns and castles. Once captured you can set the tax rate, farm the land resources for yourself and have a new place to call home so long as you can defend it from other players. One of the more common questions I get asked on my other Conqueror's Blade videos is is this game pay to win? I've seen people argue really on both sides of the coin on this topic, but personally I tend to come down on the side of no. There isn't anything in game that can't be unlocked with the in-game currency, except for cosmetics, and they are purely for looks and convey no in-game stat bonus. There is a premium account, which will give you 30% more honour and bronze coins for battles, so maybe you could argue there's an element of sort of pay to progress, but personally, I think compared to other MMO combat games in this genre, I think Conqueror's Blade does actually a pretty reasonable job of avoiding many of the classic pay-to-win elements that you sort of see in these types of game. So what are the negative parts of the game? Well, matchmaking is certainly one issue that seems to rear its head quite often. Players like myself who have been playing the game since closed beta are obviously much more experienced and have better units than new players who have only been playing for a few months. Yet, sometimes the matchmaking will throw the old and new players together, which can of course make for quite a brutal experience. There have also traditionally been some server issues, with lag sometimes cropping up during the peak times. Although there have been some efforts in recent months to try and fix this, and the situation does seem to be improving. I'd also say balance is a continued area of controversy. With so many different combat units, cavalry, infantry, pikes, archers, muskets and more, along with different heroes and different hero weapons, getting them all to balance together fairly is something that the developers are constantly fighting with. 
and it can sometimes feel like you're fighting against units that are distinctly better or frankly overpowered for what they are and this can sometimes make for a kind of frustrating experience but despite the issues the game does have it really is a pretty unique game and there really isn't anything else out there that is as good or plays as well as Conquer Blade but let's hop into a little bit of a quick siege battle now and I'll just show you a few of the points of what's going on and you can see a little bit of the combat in more detail. So in the opening part of the siege like we are here, the siege towers are being pushed in, the battering ram is being pushed up. People are mostly using their low tier units because they don't want to get hit by cannonballs, ballistas, archers that we can see shooting out from the wall there, although that may be us shooting in. And you see the ladders are going up, players are getting in position. People are sort of getting ready to assault the walls. This is kind of the preparation phase. It normally lasts a couple of minutes. As a melee hero, I find this kind of a more dull phase. Although it looks here like we've got some enemy sort of low tier units sallying forth out of the gate and attacking the backing ram. They're just trying to delay it. it. Looks like they're pulling their way back in now and they're probably going to close the gate behind them. This is what kind of the opening phases of the siege are like. Then once we get the siege equipment in, the proper fighting is going to begin. Once the siege towers are in position, the battering ram is in place, the proper fighting can be in. As you can see, there are kind of two flags at the top of the map, an A and a B. These represent two areas that need to be captured. Initially, the courtyard just beyond the gate, and then the B point is sort of the main barracks area around this side of the castle. Once one of these is captured, it opens up the second stages that you have to capture to get into the citadel and kind of keep pushing. So they represent areas of the map you've got to be able to attack. I'm in now with my heavy knights. Looks like there's some enemy archers down there we've got to watch out for. But maybe it's worth pushing around the top, see if we can find a better way of flanking. Looks like we've got some friendly archers here putting down some base of fire. Looks like there's quite a lot of enemies down the bottom of these stairs. Let's get ourselves grouped up. Try and get our unit to form up into a line. See if maybe we can push down this staircase. Take uh, there's a couple of enemy players down there. Maybe it's worth just bypassing them if they're not going to come up from there. They are in quite a defensive position. Maybe we should be instead pushing on and looking around at going behind. Unless they're going to be prepared to move up. Maybe this enemy player has made a mistake. Okay, let's go for it. I'm going in. Okay, we've got some really good charge off. We've now got to see if we can capitalise us and push through all these shield units and kind of keep pushing them down the stairs. Without getting ourselves killed, my health is dangerously low, but we are pushing through them. You can see our units are at the front fighting, using their heavy sword and shield to push through. And we seem to have cut through the bulk of the units down there. Nice job. So we have captured the A point and we are now pushing on to the citadel, to the second stage of the castle. Looks like we're also capturing sort of the main area around the B point, but we've also got troops funneling up the stairs. We've really got some good momentum going now. And we're really trying to put the pressure on the enemy team to sort of capture this citadel staging area. Once we capture that, then the castle is in our control and the siege is ours. And you can sort of get an idea of the unit variety. We've got some people who brought some small cannons. We've got pikes, we've got foot infantry, we've got archers everywhere. You see there's a unit of peasants there. There's such a mix of tiers and unit variety available in the game. And that kind of is what makes the game so enjoyable for me. The variety is kind of what makes it so exciting and makes it such a fun game to play. And there we go, we've driven them back. Almost victory is soon to be ours if we can just get these last few enemy heroes off the point. Some brutal fighting going on and then with him dead that should be it and there we go the victory is ours and we captured the castle there's a lot more to this game than just siege battles like this but it does give you a little bit of an initial overview of kind of what the game is all about there are many positives and negatives to the game but it is pretty unique and there isn't really a lot like it and for a free to play game i think it really is worth checking out i've been playing it for a year and a half now and well i wouldn't have done that if i didn't like it so I would certainly say download the game, give it a whirl, you've got nothing to lose. And if it's not for you, then well, you can just uninstall it again. You can either download it from Steam or from sort of your local regional area. But certainly I would recommend checking the game out. Anyway, hopefully you've enjoyed the review. If you have, let me know what you think in the comments down below. If you have any further questions about the game, put them down there there, and I'll get back to you. Thanks for watching, guys, and I shall see you all on the next video.